Hi friends, today we shall study aseptic processing and packaging. In fact, nowadays if you go to the market and see in the shop shelf variety of products we find which are produced using aseptic processing and packaging technologies and they are basically sterilized, heat treated or by other type of methods right. They are commercially sterilized to extend their self life. So, there are basically two methods which are generally used for commercial sterilization of foods and they are two types like in one case the food is first packaged in the container and then heat treated. In the other case the food as well as the packaging material they are separately sterilized then it is followed by packaging in aseptic environment. So, the first process that is the heating the food after it has been placed in the container is actually the conventional canning method and is in principle the same method that was used by the French uh, scientist Nicolas Appert in fact, who invented the canning process. So, the conventional canning accordingly is also known as appetization. The second method where the food materials and packaging materials are separately sterilized and then they are packaged in aseptic environment are known as or is known as aseptic processing. This aseptic processing and packaging technology results in improved product quality because in the conventional canning process the material is first uh, packaged and then it is heated. So, there is a there is the resistance to heat transfer is provided by the packaging material environment inside the package outside. So, there are so many factors and in general to desired uh, to obtain commercial or desired commercial sterility the more energy is required to be given and accordingly the conventionally kind of products they result into that is heat degradation of the uh, uh, there is some important heat sensitive components etcetera. So, nutrients losses etcetera also may be problem, but these drawbacks of the conventional canning processes are taken care of in the aseptic processing because there is no not much involvement the package the material and packaging material and food material both are separately sterilized. So, there is even by giving comparatively less amount of energy that is the desired sterility can be obtained right and also it provides economic packaging alternatives that is the packaging or packages of different shape sizes etcetera even consumer packs bulk packs all those things here in aseptic packaging technology uh, can be used to make variety of packages or different types of packages etcetera. So, here in this right, I have just tried to give you a pictorial representation of the aseptic packaging technology I could see here there are two that is one the product line is coming from here that is the product sterilization. So, the sterilization of the product in another line sterilization of the container or the packaging material and then these come in the aseptic environment where that is they are filled and sealed using appropriate machines appropriate systems like FFS that is farm fill seal system or blow fill seal system etcetera. So, that is the aseptic processing and packaging 
technologies and uh, since generally higher temperature may be to the tune of 130 to 170 degrees Celsius are common in aseptic commercial sterilization. These processes are referred to as UHT ultra high temperature processes and the obviously the processing and at these conditions that is these high temperature if you see that microbial inactivation kinetics, enzyme inactivation kinetics. So, under such high temperature ranges enzymes that is the so greater resistance than that of the microorganism. So, these processes generally enzymes uh, inactivation is taken as the basis of the optimization of the these UST processes and so on. So, in practice there are generally two specific fields of application of aseptic packaging technologies accordingly that is the two types of aseptically packaged products are available in the market that is one set of the products are those that is where the sterilized foods is packaged that is means that is the food inside the package does not contain any viable organism for example, milk dairy products, puddings, desserts, fruits and vegetable juices, soups, sauces and even other products with particulates such like uh, uh, pea in brine solution and so on. So, all these products they are completely sterilized that is there is no viable microorganism in that, but there are other types of uh, like uh, fermented dairy products or other products where the live bacteria is present. So, obviously, that is they are also aseptically packaged. So, such type of products they by are prepared in good condition by having good manufacturing practices and by following good hygienic practices etcetera in their manufacturing line and then these manufactured products are pro products so they are packaged under aseptic environment that is there are sterile packaging materials. Examples of such these products include that is yogurt, curd etcetera. Regarding the aseptic uh, processing facility design, there are important considerations that is the aseptic processing area that is the area where the critical process steps are carried out critical process steps like material handling and conveying, product sterilization, packaging material sterilization, far fill and seal packaging and all this processes where they are carried out that is they that those areas that is complete that is aseptic environment must be maintained that is the accordingly the infrastructure facility, building, processing hall, material conveying system, handling system everything should be accordingly designed and all the handling system that is even the flow of the materials, components, product containers, closures in process materials or food products and even the personal people those who are working in the facility they should all that is appropriate design measures should be taken to have no contamination in the processing and packaging line. So, there are two important components in the aseptic processing and packaging technology that is the first is the sterilization of the product and then sterilization of the packaging material and then finally, seal, sealing and farming or filling and sealing. So, let us say first the sterilization of the product ok. So, the as far as the sterilization of the product that is basis of the sterilization or basis to obtain commercial sterility is on those principles of well founded principles of thermal processing technology or thermal bacteriology. Okay. That is it is basically a heat process thermal process heat energy is given to get the desired 
sterility level into the uh, product. So, the process optimization calculus etcetera which are uh, considered that is those are the standard thermal process calculations can be followed here like bacterial death kinetics and other things which we earlier studied briefly in the introductory part of the course or in the first or second lecture. Okay. And also that is another important thing that integrated effect of time and temperature treatment on the spores of the microorganisms, particularly the spores which can resist larger uh, temperature and other conditions to a larger extent more resistant. Okay. So, the pre sterilization of a product usually consists of heating the product to the desired USD temperature, maintaining this temperature for a given period in order to achieve the desired degree of sterility and this is followed by subsequent cooling and the cooling is done usually to the ambient temperature and sometimes even to an elevated temperature to achieve right viscosity in the product or viscosity desired for the filling purposes. Heating and cooling that is one very important aspect to that that is heating and cooling should be performed as rapidly as possible to achieve the best quality in the product. Of course, depending upon the nature of the product and a fast heat exchange rate is also desired for the cost regions because if the heat transfer is fast or heat generating equipment has a better efficiency obviously, the cost involved in the energy production will be less. And since the UST processes are of the order of seconds, the important factor is the residence time and the residence time of the material in the flow conditions etcetera, it should be precisely controlled to avoid under processing. The processing systems which are used for obtaining commercial sterility in this aseptic processing and packaging system are that is the different types of heat exchangers that is the product sterilization and cooling may be obtained by using direct or indirect heat exchange type. Heat exchangers normally which are used that is scribed surface heat exchangers, plate heat exchangers, tubular heat exchangers or even equipment involving direct steam injection and systems have been developed. Now, we have very good efficient uh, system for heat transfer or heat exchangers and both for liquid as well as the liquids containing smaller particles. However, that is the for the liquid containing uh, bigger particles for example, pea or corn in brine or meat pieces in gravy. So, there are some problem is still in some cases exist and the problem is that actually the availability of the suitable packaging or sorry suitable pumping system that is pumping system which does not damage the particles and assures a fail safe residence time. So, that is important. So, material conveying system, material flow, uh, hand uh, pumping system should be uh, good or efficient system. So, that it uh, conveys the material and it the rate otherwise if the pumping system is not good even the fluid may flow at a faster rate in comparison to the there is the particulates and see the difference in the flow velocity of the particulates and these uh, fluids may result into the under processing or over processing. So, in order to design the process of the aseptic processing or aseptic heating system, there is a holding time is important as I told you in the earlier slide. So, particularly the holding time in relation to the flow characteristics of the fluid that is so that, that whether it is a piston flow, turbulent flow or laminar or viscous flow. Normally, three types of flows might take place. Okay. So, in the continuous system of sterilization, this fluid velocity in the heat exchanger as well as in the heating 
are holding tube all right is important and this uh, may be approximated by one of the three ways as i told you that depending upon the type of the material type of the flue three types of flow may be obtained number one is the piston flow which is ideal but it is unfortunately very rare in the food systems so in the case of piston flow the mean holding time is equal to the residence time and from the knowledge of the holding tube capacity and average flow rate the tube length required for piston flow conditions can be calculated for turbulent flow the maximum velocity is referred to or assumed to be 1.25 times the of the average velocity whereas in case of laminar or viscous flow as is seen in the case of non newtonian fluids like sauces soups pulps and concentrates etc the average velocity is one half of the maximum and these assumptions hold important that hold importance in calculation of the tube length and processing time fruit pulps and concentrates so yield stress and laminar flow and since the characteristics of laminar flow is well known the holding tube length can be calculated using this uh, formula like l is equal to constant 7.007 into 10 to the power minus 7 q tf divided by d square where l is the length of the holding tube in meters q is the fluid flow rate liter per hour tf is the fastest particle residence time it is in seconds and d is the holding tube diameter in meter so when the product quality is the main consideration the holding time must be based on the mean velocity rather than the fastest particle velocity because the measured mean residence time is twice the residence time for fastest particles to travel through the holding tube under laminar flow conditions so the mean residence time tm can be calculated using the equation that is 2. tm is equal to 2.82 into 10 to the power 6 l d square by q so here tm is the mean product residence time l is the holding tube length d is the holding tube diameter and q is the flow rate in liter per hour optimization of the sterilization temperature has been studied even for many products these are well standardized and well optimized to maximize the retention of nutrient as well as to minimize the undesirable changes and these processes are commercially being used and products aseptically processed and packaged as i told you variety of products are available in the market in the shop shelf however in view of the difficulties in ascertaining the residence time of the particles and the contribution of the residence time to the total microbial or enzyme in activation it would be more appropriate to establish the stst or ust process on the residence time of the slowest moving particle and its temperature as it leaves the tube holding tube that is important that is the slowest moving particle so that because our aim should be that inside the tube the particles which is moving at a slowest rate it should get the desired exposure to the required temperature so as to get the desired sterility 
that is very important and accordingly this should be considered properly in engineering calculation for optimization of these processes. And another thing that is in the industry or in the factory, the same type of equi same equipment can be used for both dairy as well as non-dairy product like for fruit juices, for yogurt etcetera, for culture buttermilk etcetera, similar are for milk, fermented milk or for other products same, same equipments and system can be used except that that is the scrapped surface ex exchangers are used for fluids which exhibit laminar flow as well as the product containing particulates that is in order to maintain so that is suitable pumping system as well as scrapped surface heat exchangers are used. In this uh, uh, slide I have uh, given you, I have shown you the characteristics of the heat exchange systems which are generally used for aseptic processing like equipment type that is the like whether it is a steam injection or infusion or plate heat exchanger or tubular heat exchanger may be small tube or large tubes or even swept surface tube exchanger etcetera. So, what is the system? What is its effect on product quality, aroma retention? energy saving, capital cost space, pulp capability, fouling length of run as well as turn down etcetera. For example, that is the steam injection or infusion has been excellent found to be excellent system as far as the product quality is concerned However, but the or aroma retention may be a problem otherwise energy saving is least in this case capital cost is high space requirement is fair and accordingly the other processes you can see here and understand and depending upon this that is depending upon the product depending upon your financial conditions and the product characteristics uh, desired in the characteristic desired in the end product as well as that is the financial infrastructure involved one can uh, suitably decide what type of system is good for his type of product and accordingly should choose. So, after having studied the processing system or product sterilization system and considerations for optimizing the process parameters for the getting desired sterility in the product or materials food product, let us now see that packaging system another important consideration and the recent development that is so we see that the variety of uh, aseptically processed and packaged, pa uh, packaged products in the market and the uh, most of this is because of the development in the or now availability of the packaging systems that is the recent development in aseptic processing generally have centered on a post sterilization packaging operation in one of the systems flash 18 is used for filling solid food which have been directly sterilized in steam. The operation is carried out in a room pressurized to 18 psig with air. Since the boiling point of water at 18 psig at around 124 degree Celsius, the products with 124 degree Celsius can be handled in these rooms without boiling. After the product is heated up to 124 degree Celsius with steam, the product is filled into the non-sterile cans following under flowing steam, sealed and held for a time that is sufficient to achieve desired sterilization. The cans are then cooled and transferred out of the pressurized chamber. So, this system has been applied successfully to the sterilization of meat and fish uh, salads. However, the equipment is expensive and it is difficult to maintain a staff willing to work under such unusual pressure conditions like under pressurized room. Okay. 
So, the packaging system must be capable of sterilizing the container and filling the product by UST or STST system in an aseptic manner and sealing the container hermetically so that the product sterility is maintained throughout the handling and distribution. Different systems like FFS, farm fills and seal machines are used for aseptic packaging either in the rigid or flexible containers in unit packs for direct sale to the consumer or in bulk uh, containers for subsequent processing and all these have been developed. So, the commercially sterile products that is packaged products aseptically processed and packaged product are expected to have an extended shelf life. Hence, the package which is used or packaging material which is used they should have certain characteristics or desired characteristics. For example, they should be impermeable to gases, water and other oxygen vapors, they should have effective barrier in transmission of light, they should be inert, they should be resistant to chemicals, radiations and heat treatments needed for sterilization of the packaging, they should be capable of being hermetically sealed to provide barrier against microbial contamination, they should be sustained uh, insert damage, insect damage, okay, resist deterioration changes, relatively should be less expensive and they should be easily disposable that is important. So, the different types of materials which are used that is the particularly the metal containers which are in use from the beginning of the commercial development of aseptic sterilization, they have all the intrinsic properties which we have mentioned in the last slide. However, the limitations to their use relate to the package geometry and the relatively high cost involved in this. Glass containers, they have similar limitations to those of the metal containers and additionally, they have the disadvantage of fragility and high density. So, generally metal containers and glass containers are normally that is their use in a septic processing and packaging is avoided. So, polythene, polypropylene being thermoplastic are generally used for product or for producing bottle packs. These bottles may be either preformed or made just before filling in blow fill and seal equipment. Now, so, they are used normally polyethylene and polypropylene as a flexible packages, but since no plastic material has all the desirable characteristics which are listed earlier in the last slide. So, generally more than 2, 3 or 4 or in sometimes 6 or 8 layers of in fact co extruded laminates may be plastic, aluminum, paper, plastic, aluminum. So, four layers or six layers or eight layers of these materials, they are used and they are co extruded they are co extruded laminates are used for filling and packaging of these aseptically processed products. The aluminum foil which is used in lamination with plastic films improves the barrier characteristics of the package, paper provides physical resistance to the package and so on. So, now, the, for the sterilization of the aseptic packaging materials and equipment, both heat, chemical and radiations are normally used. The product supply lines, fillers that are commonly sterilized by moist heat in the form of hot water or saturated steam under pressure. However, dry heat in the form of superheated steam or hot air may also be used or it is used for the it can be used for the sterilization of the equipment. However, due to relatively high dry heat resistance of the bacterial spores, the time temperature requirements for the dry heat sterilization processes are considerably high than those of the moist, moist heat sterilization processes. So, the systems if employing moist heat are sterilized at temperature ranging from 121 to 129 degree Celsius, while those using dry heat they have the temperature around 100 
76 to 200. 32 degrees Celsius. So, the dry heat uh, sterilization required higher heat temperature than those of the moist heating systems or uh, systems which employ moist heat. Sterilization of air by incineration usually is conducted at temperature generally higher temperature ranging from 260 to 315 degrees Celsius. Regarding the chemicals, it is the hydrogen peroxide which is the choice of all the industries. Other chemicals like that is uh, acids, ethanols, ethylene oxide or per acetic acid can also be used. Hydrogen peroxide in fact uh, is not uh, it does not have required or efficient sporocidal activities at room temperature. However, the sporocidal activity of the hydrogen peroxide increases substantially with increasing temperature. So, the in the practice what they do that is most of the aseptic packaging systems they use hydrogen peroxide at the concentration of around 30 to 35 percent as a sterilant of the packaging materials followed by the heat treatment from ranging from 60 degree Celsius to 125 degree Celsius to dissipate the residual hydrogen peroxide as well as to destroy the spores etcetera if present any. Radiation you have seen the in the food irradiation chapter that is gamma gamma radiation has the ability to uh, destroy microorganisms etcetera even the spores etcetera can be. So, this is used to from the decades to decontaminate packaging material as well. Okay. But uh, a dose of approximately 1.5 m red is commonly used to decontaminate containers for acid and acidified foods. Okay. Dose is required to sterilize containers for use with low acid foods are considerably higher than those required for packaging acid food or acidified food. Now, there is we should that is uh, consider the what should be the label of sterility, what should be the heat and time temperature residence time given to the packaging material like the in the product we have sterilized. Similarly, we should uh, give the ex optimum exposure of the packaging material to the heat etcetera should be worked out. So, literature reports say that the average microbial count on a plastic food contact surface ranges generally from 0.3 to 10 organisms per 100 centimeter square. On a polythene food contact surface of paper board based laminate immediately after producing the packaging material average total count has been reported to be 2 to 5 per 100 centimeter square and of this about uh, roughly 10.5 percent is yeast about 20 25 percent is mold and remaining 68 69 percent is bacteria. So, these bacterial count etcetera numbers that is which are available in the literature reports etcetera they indicate that 5 to or 4 to 5 decimal reductions might be required or they it might be considered necessary to ensure that the spoilage is not there in excess of 5 in 10,000 okay. that is 1 out of uh, that is 10 to the power 5 or it should not be more than 5 in any case. So, accordingly the risk of defectives that is R can be calculated all right like R is equal to N 0 uh, S into 10 to the power minus T by D that is this equation can be used for the finding out risk of defectives ok r is the risk n is the number of the most resistant organism per square centimeter f is the food contact area in the square centimeter t is the time of sterilization process and d is the decimal reduction time of most heat resistant organism. So, using this that is whether 5 lakh cycle reduction, 4 lakh cycle reduction etcetera and accordingly one can find out that is what should be the uh, process conditions. So, that the risk of defective is not maybe risk of defective is 1 out of 10 
thousand, two out of ten thousand is the one can where. So after packaging, filling and sealing, there is the seals and closures. Also important aspect, the system must be capable of closing and are sealing the package hermetically to maintain sterility during the handling and distribution that is seal should be leak proof. So, the integrity of the closure and the seal therefore, of paramount importance okay. the integrity of the heat seals used in most aseptic systems is primarily influenced by the efficiency of the sealing system used and contamination of the heat seal area by the product. So, either longitudinal system or traverse system is used. In the longitudinal system, a flat web of packaging material is used, right? And, and in the flat material web is formed into a tube which is sealed longitudinally, resulting in a cylindrical shaped surface. In traverse sealing, there is a uh, the material that is done, it is done below the level of the product in the packaging material tube. By constantly moving sealing and pressure jaws, pressure is applied from the outside of the packaging material tube, squeezing the product from the sealing area. So, this so J that is the schematic representation how the material that is for a aseptic processing and filling of the fruits that is here that is yellow line shows that is how the fruit juice or pulp is moving basically it is extracted and then sterilization cooler to it is passed and this uh, even the other packaging material etcetera that is sterilized tube heater so the material comes through this takes through this side comes here it is heated and then given the holding tube finally and a completely sterile product is coming here and the packaging material is sterile. so this is the farm fill seal machine in this area the material is sealed and in appropriate packaging so in this slide i have just summarized that the different aseptic packaging systems that are available that is in consumer packs or in institutional packs. There is the forms of the packet like cans, bottles, pouch, cups, cartons, etcetera. What is the material of their concentration and what are the different sterilizing and filling methods used. Similarly, that aseptic packaging systems in bulk containers like drums, bag in box containers, refrigerated tanks, rail or road tankers generally what are their material of construction and their sterilization and filling methods which is normally used. So, this you can study from these tables and get yourself acquainted. So, with this I thank you very much for your patience hearing, I think you have got a good null pool. I hope that if these you can form a basis to understand further through study and home assignment that we will be giving, which will further influence and you can do some practice of one or two, take one or two examples and see how these processes are calculated using a standard therm, the thermal process calculations that are for the sterilization process, how it is then for the packaging material, how it is done for the product material and then finally, what are the different systems which are used for filling and sealing. So, ultimately you can say that this is a very, very versatile technology for the processing of the product and processing value addition and self life extension that is we get high quality products in a economical forms in a variety of consumer package using this technology. Thank you.